Hi there. In this video, we'll have a quick look at the exam of September 2023. As you can see, this video concerns only the grid converter control part. The purpose of this exam is to test whether students understand the effect of the interlock strategy used for the current controller. Of course, to test this interlock strategy, we need to enable the converter and compare these strategies. Of course, we will do this in simulation. If you remember, in the previous videos and during the laboratory sessions, we have started the simulation with the LCL filter connected to the grid and with the grid converter enabled. To compare the different interlock strategies, we will start the simulation with the grid converter disabled. So we'll click over here and we'll have to simulate the system for a little longer because during the simulation we will enable the control. So we'll set the simulation time to let us say five seconds. Now the problem is that the enable signal does not have any influence on the model. You can see this when we double click on our process model and you can see that the enable signal that is entering over here does not have any influence on the process model. When the enable signal is set to one, we need to model a situation when the converter is enabled. This is really the situation that we have so far. But when the enable signal is set to zero, we need to model a situation where the converter is disabled. And this situation has not been taken into account by our model. So the first question is really to take into account the enable signal so that when enable is set to one, you have a situation where the inverter is active, right? And when enabled is set to zero, well, the inverter should be inactive. Well, you can see here that there is a little footnote that tells you how to model the system when the inverter is inactive. You have already done this at the end of exercise one when you have tested your model. If you remember, you have set VIM to V cap and the voltage on the capacitors and you did that to make sure that the inverter current was zero well to modify our model to take into account a situation where enable is set to zero when the inverter is not enabled we'll simply set the inverter current to zero well, you can see now that I have saved my work under another name file to take into account that we have taken the enabling of the grid converter in the model. Here we have a different model, the simplified model with the enable, and we can now have a look inside to see how we did this. You can see that in this new model, the enable signal is entering the LCL filter model and we have added over here a switch, right? So that when enable is set to one, you have the usual LCL filter as it was implemented before. So you have VINF minus V cap that is entering the model over here. And this is then used to, well, compute the current EL1. When enable is set to zero, we have to fix the current EL1, which is also the inverter current to zero. And we do this by simply switching to a zero value. As said before, this is simply also setting that VINF is equal to VCAP. As you can see, the changes in the model are quite straightforward. So for the second part of the exam, so for the second question, what we'll do is run the software with our controller, our current controller disabled. And this emulates the fact that the converter is disabled. We'll run it for five seconds. And when the simulation has started, we'll enable the controller. We'll do this so that we can have a look at the transients in three different situations, right? So make sure that 
VIMF, so the output of the current controller is clearly visible in the main scope. The first situation corresponds to the correct interlock strategy, so you have to simulate the software with an IQ set point of 0 amps, explain the simulation results and of course explain why this strategy is the correct interlock mechanism. In the second situation you have to disconnect the binary track signal from the current controller so that it is no longer going to tracking mode when the converter is disabled. You have to simulate the software with IQ set point of 10 amps, remove any limitations on the current controller so there are min max limitations on vinf right so vinf max and vinf min you set them to plus infinity and minus infinity you will see something appearing a problematic behavior right and then you have to explain these simulation results so in this third and final situation, the controller is going to tracking mode when the controller is disabled, when the converter is disabled. So the binary track signal is correctly connected, but the signal being tracked, track val, is simply set to zero, right? Simulate with an IQ set point of zero amps, explain the simulation results and compare with the first situation and explain why this third interlock strategy is problematic. Before we go any further, a little reminder about the grid inverter control strategy. Here we have the grid current controller at the input you have of course the inverter current set point and process value and at the output you have the inverter voltage right and so this is the feedback part the feedback part is of course associated with a feed forward part and a decoupling part for the feed forward part we use the grid voltage the idea is that if you set the inverter voltage to be exactly the grid voltage you'll have a zero current right so this will help the pi controller right and since after going to a dq framework you have coupled equations right? you have a coupling between the d and q components you should decouple these right so this is of course what you should implement for the grid inverter controller if this is new to you you should refer to the previous videos let us now have a look at the simulation that we had obtained here you recognize the current controller uh, the current is in DQ format and here you have the feed forward so you have V grid DQ here you have the decoupling part both components are added and they enter the controller over here they are not added at the back over here because what we want to do of course is to limit the sum of the feedback part and the feed forward part this is something that we have discussed in previous courses in practical process control and also in digital control remember that for a pi controller we have also two additional signals for interlocks for tracking right track here is a binary signal right whereas mv track or sometimes called track val is the value that you want to follow in tracking mode so if this signal track here this binary signal is set to one the idea is that mv the output of the controller will follow this tracking signal over here and this is implemented in the controller to ensure that there is no integral windup there are two ways to do this well there is the first the positive feedback implementation of the controller that we have seen in the course of practical process control and there is also a way to do this using integral reset and this is done in the course of digital control 
So let us have a look at both these solutions. In this file, we have used the positive feedback implementation of the PI controller, as you can see over here. As I said, this is the solution that comes from the course practical process control. And you can see that if track is set to one, MV will follow MV track, right? And the controller will be in tracking mode. And what is naturally implemented in this uh, solution is that there is no integral windup present. In this file, a discrete PI controller is implemented and this solution comes from the course of digital control. In addition to tracking, you can see that a manual mode has been implemented. So let's have a look at the solution. So here it's implemented using code, right? And what you can see here are proportional action, derivative action, and integral action over here. And you can see that if the controller goes to tracking mode, so if track on is set to one, you have a so-called reset of integral action. MVI and the integral part is set to this value over here. And the result will be that in the end, if you add this one with these ones over here, what will be left is MV track. So as a result, if track on is set to one, MV will be equal to MV track and you will have prevented wind up of integral action. In this video, we'll use the positive feedback implementation that comes from the course practical process control. So what is the correct way to do the interlock strategy? Well, of course, you have to connect the track binary input to something that tells you that the controller is disabled. So you take the enabled signal and you go to a not. So if the controller is disabled, the controller will go into interlock tracking mode. And obviously the signal it has to track is the same signal that is used for feed forward. So the feed forward signal and the decoupling signal. The idea is that when the controller is in tracking mode because the inverter is not enabled, the output MV has to be prepared to something that is close to what will be uh, happening in a situation when the controller is enabled so that there is no discontinuity when you do the enabling. So what we'll do now is run the simulation within Q current set point of zero, right? We'll run the simulation and as soon as it runs, we'll enable the grid converter. So let's do this. So now it has started, so we have enabled and we can wait until the five seconds have been completed. And then we can have a look at the scope, right? So you can see here that I have the VINF, right? And we can have a look here at the point where we have enabled the controller, right? And you can see here that at the time of the enabling of the controller, there is almost no discontinuity in what was produced by the controller before enabling and after enabling. And this is because we had used the correct um, interlock strategy, right? And this results in an inverter current that has a relatively small peak. You will see later that this will get much worse if you use the wrong interlock strategy. Note that when we enable the controller, you can clearly see that the DC bus is going to its set point value. Let us have a look at the second situation. We have removed the connection to the binary track signal so that this controller never goes into tracking mode. It remains active even if the grid converter is disabled. What we have done 
or what we will do is run the simulation with an IQ set point of 10 amp and we have also removed any limitations on the inf and we have done this by setting the parameters mv min and mv max to minus inf and inf respectively so that you would see the phenomenon appearing in full detail so what we'll do is run the simulation and then we enable the controller right and now we can have a look at what is happening right and here you can clearly see what is happening since the controller is active when the inverter is not activated well you have kind of broken the feedback loop and what you see of course is integral wind up so let us have a look at the third situation our controller is now going to interlock mode to tracking mode when the controller is disabled but the tracking signal is set to zero so what we'll do is prevent integrator wind up but when we'll enable the controller there will still be a discontinuity because well the the inf that we need in order to produce a zero current is precisely the grid and we have not used it as an interlock signal so the controller will have to make sure that the output v inf goes from zero and that's the tracking signal to something that looks like v grid and it will have a much harder job to do this right so to be comparable with the first situation we'll simulate this with an IQ set point of zero. And now we can run the simulation, enable the controller, wait, and have a look at the scope. So as before, the DC bus voltage goes to set point. We can now have a look at the transients around the period where we have uh, enabled our controller as you can see here the imp starts from zero in the first situation we had a situation where the inf was already looking like this signal so here the controller has a much harder job to do and this results because you have to do things in a reactive way in much higher peak currents right if you look at the first situation you will see that we had peak currents below 10 amps here they go to 60 amps if you would do this on an actual system for instance on the actual triphase system that we have at ECAM well you would see that the inverser would stop directly on current limitation so you can clearly see the advantage of the first interlock strategy this concludes this video that reviews the exam of September 2023 and also analyzes the effect of the correct interlock strategy.